My name is Ghost Guy Daniel, and as promised, I said I would read a chapter from my book. Now, if you don't listen to the podcast, yes, I was able to write a book. This is very exciting for me. I am uh, quite proud of it. It is a small horror novel, and I read uh, one of the chapters on the podcast, which uh, it kind of established one of the main characters, uh, a psychic named Jade Jackson. But I didn't establish the other character. So I thought, what better than a video live read, something I'm trying to get more into, to do that chapter. It was one of my favorite chapters. I'm, I'm very proud of this chapter and the, uh, the imagery in it. I, I did maybe went a little bit too far, I guess you could say. But uh, you can tell me. You can comments below. Let me know what you think. Uh, but this chapter is introducing one of the other main characters, a fellow named Clive Harper, and an experience that he had when traveling back to his old hometown to meet up with the uh, the demon that he must face. Not personal demons, but an actual demon. So this is a little detour he took to a small market and what happens from that. I hope you enjoy it. Chapter 9. Detour to Hell Getting out of the car, Clive felt the sunlight across his face. Small birds chirped in the distance and a light wind rustled the trees. Forgetting for a moment that the ghost of a woman he loved like a mother was luring him back to a dreaded place for something terrible. At this moment, it was just a nice drive in the country. Stepping inside the market, aisles lined with open bins of organic fruit, jars of preservatives covered the back wall. Fresh baked bread lured him to the back where he looked over the jams. We make those fresh. Clive turned to see a woman behind the counter, older with silver hair done up in a bun, a big smile under kind eyes. Had a doubt, but which one's best? Had no doubt, but which one's best? All of them, she laughed. My husband likes the wild blueberry. He picked up the jar, no label, just dark blue jam inside the thick glass. Blueberry it is. Walking up to the counter, Clive handed over the jar. How long have you been open here? My husband Will and I opened, oh, has to be thirty years now. Wanted to escape the craziness of the city. Thought what better than a small market off a quiet country road. You get enough customers? You'd be surprised. Well, it's been quiet for, quiet for a while now. Strange. Sure, it'll pick up. Have no doubt. I'm sure you're popular around here. Clive looked at the woman's name tag. A small piece of wood with black letters burned into it. L-I-L-Y. Your name is Lily? Yes, dear. Your husband is Will? Yes. Why do you ask? Clive's thoughts ran fast. No reason. How much do I owe you? The old woman slowly punched the numbers into the register. The floor shook and Clive jumped. What the heck? A bang from under his feet, a noise just for a second, and a strained voice, quick, Rita, and then quiet. The old woman, still smiling, no longer a warm smile, her lips pulled back, corners tightened at the ends, pulled towards her ears, her eyes wide, too wide. Clive stepped back. Don't worry, it's just my husband in the basement. Clive felt the pressure against his leg, looked down to see a small brown dog sniffing his leg, cute little wiener breed of some sort. It looked up at Clive, tongue sticking out, its panting face looked like a smile. Clive smiled back. Hello, little guy. He reached down and stroked the dog's back, smooth fur down its back, reached around to scratch its tummy, and something moved against Clive's hand. The fur fell into a hole, movement as things vibrated around his fingers, warm and wet. Pulled his hand back to see three maggots stuck to his finger. The dog turned and walked from the room, a trail of slithering maggots left along the floor. That'll be five dollars, dear. I cut the tax since you're such a lovely customer. Clive shook his head. Okay, thanks for that. He dug out his wallet and passed over the bill. She reached as a light bulb from a small back room behind the counter caught his eye. Light spilled out as it got brighter. Something wrong with that light? He pointed back, but the woman didn't break her stare. 
She took the money, made a fist, and punched hard against the register slot open. Stupid effing thing needs to learn. Her face twisted down with a long frown to the chin. The woman's handsome face dragged towards the, her neck, stretching the ends of her mouth. The drawer shot open, revealing empty trays as a large black spider crawled out over the woman's fingers, slowly up her arm, disappearing under her sleeve. Her eyes changed. The light gray iris glowed deep purple. Her sh she sh He shook his head, blinked, and the smiling woman returned. She carefully closed the register and put the jam in a bag. This isn't right. She handed the bag to Clive. He grabbed it while turning to leave. His shot, arm shot back, stumbling as the old woman held tight to the bag. He pulled against her iron grip, fused like the hand of a statue. Are you sure you want to leave, dear? Maybe you'd like to stay. No, that's... But we want you. There's nothing for you in town. You belong with us in the basement. My will, your will, it's all the same. It only hurts for a bit, then pure bliss. Her face changed, skin from her head and cheeks melted down like liquid into her neck. Sharp white cheekbones peeked out under widened eyes. Clive let go of the bag and ran down the aisle, not looking back as he plunged through the front door. Outside, his toe caught the top step of the porch, pitching him forward as the gravel met his face. Are you okay? Opening his eyes to blinding sunlight, a woman stood over him, her large dog licking his arm. That must have hurt. You okay? Clive pulled himself up. I'm good. Yeah, you really got to be careful. The old building's not safe. She stared behind him. Whoops. She stared behind him. Clive turned to the market. The wood building had changed, now barely standing, a ruin. Doors and windows covered by dark, mold-covered wood planks. The roof collapsed at the front, the right side of the porch fallen, pushing down the front steps at an angle. Large red graffiti sprayed along the front. Murder. Black soot crawled up the walls above the windows. The woman said, are you sure you're okay? Clive realized how crazy this must look. He brushed off his pants. Yeah, I'm cool. Just walked up to get some pictures. Guess I got too close for my own good. What is this place? She shook her head. So tragic, really. I knew them, too. It's a nice old couple ran the market, Rita and Ian. Mystery, really, uh, but so many rumors. Uh, said Rhea killed her husband and the dog. Who kills a dog? She looked at her dog sitting calmly, his protective eyes frozen on Clive. Not to get too dark, I heard it was like a horror movie. Uh, said she snuck up behind Ian, uh, smashed his skull in with a hammer, the little old lady somehow lifted her husband onto a meat hook in the basement. Clive felt sick, and she noticed. Don't worry, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not going to go into details. Uh, Ian was, I'll say, a robust man, and said his weight strained the basement steel, uh, ceiling and almost collapsed it. And he hangs there for two days before bleeding to death. Rita killed him, then the dog, and then lit the place up. The woman pointed to the black stains. CSI stuff, you know, she said uh, she broke a light bulb in the back room, started the fire, and they found her standing behind the counter. Yeah, burned up, but still standing. Shook her head. Our local reporter likes gruesome details, and what can I say, it gets boring out here. Clive had to leave. He thanked the young lady and hurried to his car, jumped in, seeing the confused woman's face as he drove off. She fell over as the dog broke away, hearing through the car window, What you doing, Clever? There's no dogs in there. Clive hit the gas, passing a small road sign with a white arrow pointing up. It read, Clan Brassel. This is going to make more sense <laughs> when you read the book. Uh, there's certain aspects and things that were mentioned in there that... Um, um, they get explained as the character's backstory and whatnot, you know, the name of his, his guardians and his parents come up. So, uh, it's not as confusing as it seems just from me reading that one, one chapter there, but, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed hearing it as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. If you are interested in the book, it is called Godfrey, that's G-O-D-R-F-R-E-Y. It is on Amazon. I will put the links in the description below. That's it.